What is up guys, gals, and do you awesome, awesome ears and gamers of different shapes and sizes, it is me, Joshua, you know, Proxy, bringing you some Let It Die today on the PlayStation 4 Pro, and it's pretty freaking awesome, we'd love to know your opinion of it in the comment section below, and also don't forget to drop a like if you enjoy this video, and why not subscribe for more of this type of content in the future, because I'm actually really, really enjoying Let It Die, it's what I've been playing at the moment over, say, Titanfall, obviously I love Titanfall to death, and I will be continuously playing that over the course of its life cycle, along with being able to provide you loads of awesome some videos when it comes to all the DLC and just casual content and everything. But I want to show you a little bit more of Let It Die. I don't think I'm going to do too many videos on this game, but it was still a thing where I wanted to cover quite a bit of it, just so I could kind of show you the mechanics, the progression, what it all kind of plays like. As you can see here, I'm actually sneaking up behind enemy AI and just taking them out silently. This is one of the things you can actually do in the game where you can do kind of like suplexes and stuff like that, which I think is kind of cool. You can also do, as I showed you in the last video, where you can kind of do like an aerial kind of like stealth pounce and initiation attack or something which was kind of awesome as well so loads of different kind of mechanics when it comes to actually taking down enemies obviously you can go full frontal as you can see here by just spamming attacks or you can even do like stun the call like grotesque finishes which you'll see today as well which is kind of cool as well because I was actually kind of like telling you about them and how awesome they are I did show you one in the start of the last video but this one you actually see a combination of some so you see me actually use the iron where you melt someone's face off which is really badass and the awesome thing about that is that every single weapon has its own grotesque kill. So it's not one of those things where it's kind of like, you know, you have just one finisher and then that's it. You can actually just finish off an enemy with like your bare hands and actually do a grotesque kill. And it's kind of like Batman, or should I say Bane versus Batman. You know how he ended up breaking Batman's back and he like holds him over his shoulders and snaps him in half? You can do that in this game. And that's just with your bare hands doing a grotesque kill, which is really, really badass. It's just that thing. It's that thing where there's just so much variety when it comes to the gameplay, and I really, really like that. It still stays with that kind of simplicity, though, of what you'd think of, say, like Dark Souls or Bloodborne where you are kind of just like dodging and then kind of like casually attacking at the well-placed time but it's not kind of like say like Metal Gear Rising you know Revengeance where you're kind of doing all these different combos and switching between weapons and doing you know tons of moves and like building up you know like a actual hit rate and stuff like that no 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 it's nothing like that at all it's actually just casually kind of like taking this game at your own pace and trying to survive and see how far you can get because remember the point of this game in a sense is to die is to actually lose these characters and build them up over the course the game and such and this is kind of where the grind comes in with the game which is kind of interesting I think is that I did say that initially there isn't kind of like a kind of like a forceful kind of like feeling that you have to kind of like pay to win or anything like that it, it's never actually like that the only kind of thing that you actually have is this sense of grind like over the course of the game so like a lot of the stuff that you actually buy in this game is through in-game currency and through progression. I've not actually seen anything that is monetized yet. This is the really, really cool thing is that they haven't actually brought out the store yet. So they've kind of ended up bringing the game out and showing you everything that you can achieve, everything that you can actually accomplish with no kind of like real world money. What you can actually do by just playing the game casually. And there is so much to offer and there is so much to unlock. And this is actually just me playing for, I think it was around about 49 minutes or so just under an hour. And I actually make a lot of progression. I actually find a lot of stuff, a lot of really cool loots and blueprints, which you will actually see me find and stuff. And it's just this thing of like, I'm able to find these things just by playing the game, just by actually having one run of the adventure. So I'm kind of like just going through the, the Tower of Barb as it's called. And you know, just playing the game and through that progression, through surviving and taking on those enemies, those challenges, I'm able to find some really awesome loot and do some really cool gameplay for you as you see there. That was a grotesque kill with a hammer. And again, you will see some other weapons throughout this video as well. And so when it comes to that grind, it's this thing where I have no issue with it when it comes to this game because again, it is that thing where you are pretty much just playing a Dark Souls game, a Demon Souls game, a Bloodborne type game, you know, where it is that kind of gameplay and you're used to it. And there are a nice little selection of enemies and stuff like you off pretty much just fighting against other survivors, other humans, as you've seen. But the really badass thing is that there are tons of enemies in this game as well. And you will actually see a boss fight, which is quite cool in this video. So you'll see the second boss fight, or sub-boss, I guess you'll call them. You basically have, like, mini-bosses, and then I suppose you have, like, giant bosses, which we actually get introduced to at the end of this video. So if you have actually been curious about the jackals, which is three different special types of enemy, which are basically kind of like, I don't know, like, high-tech hitman in a sense? 
well, Hitmen, I guess, would be the actual kind of pronunciation of that. Then you will actually see the cutscene of their introductory into this video as well, which is quite cool. So basically, the the jackals, which I have not actually fought yet, that's actually the last thing I came across in this really badass cutscene. And again, it's this really cool thing where Let It Die actually introduces a lot of its enemies through cutscenes, through little cinematics, and they're all really badass. Even if it's like a little sub boss, there's actually like a little bit of an introduction through some form of animation. But when it comes to the major story like based stuff, as you see there is some really awesome animation and loads of hard work has been put into this game to put the kind of like lore across on the characters and that's just really cool you know it's this thing where like again it doesn't feel like a free to play game which they're building over time they might still kind of build this game up in the future and stuff but for what it feels like the game is incredibly polished it feels really really finished especially in its cinematics and its story and the pacing which is wanting to go through so like one thing that you do in this game and this is something that I've mentioned continuously before and is the actual objective of the game is to climb the Tower of Barbs. And that is to kind of like go through all these different rooms, go these escalators you've just been seeing me go through. And it's one of those things where if it's going up, you know that you're progressing in the right direction. If you're going down, you're heading back to the waiting room, which is obviously your base hub. But when you're actually going up, you're going into these different rooms. A lot of the time, they're actually recycled rooms. So this is something, don't actually think that all the rooms are completely different. Sometimes they are actually the same room with different enemy placement and sometimes as well with different room placement. So it's one of those things where it's kind of like, like if you're using like a map maker or like a level editor, you have like chunks and you kind of put those chunks together into randomized kind of things. So it's like they, they kind of like use one bit of a room, then they'll use a, one bit of another room. You know, it's kind of like they have like a selection of different room parts that they can put together. And that is kind of your experience, which is cool, which is nice because so far a lot of these combinations have been very unique and quite kind of nerve wracking in a sense. Like there are some kind of like areas later on that I've ended up going through, which are actually a complete maze. It's one of those things where you have to try and like guess where you're going and you don't know what's going to be around each corner and it's actually that surprise when it comes to the enemy placement and especially since a lot of the enemy placement is actually off map which is quite cool. So like say sometimes you will be checking say like the ceiling or like a little like hole in the wall and stuff because enemies can actually go through this. This is an amazing grotesque kill it by way using like a portable iron. <laughs> <laughs> just like melting someone's face off. Don't you think that's badass? I think that's really, really badass. But as mentioned, there is that kind of thing where you are kind of going, like as you saw that, a guy just jumps around the corner and that's actually hidden underneath a little waterfall kind of thing. So there is this kind of thing where you are like, you know, always kind of like watching your own back, always kind of keeping an eye out because you never know who's going to pop up. The enemy placement is completely randomized. And that also includes when it comes to enemy kind of like, player AI, because as you know, one of the points of this game is that when you die, your character goes into another player's world and kind of invades them, which is kind of cool. And so what you can end up doing is you can do this thing where like you're fighting against the kind of like special kind of like player dead AI like invaders as well, but they're completely randomly placed. Sometimes they replace the like position of a standard enemy or sometimes they will actually be in some really unusual location that you've never actually seen before. Like once I actually had one that was actually hiding on top of this ledge up here and you know I've never actually seen a standard enemy AI actually be up here but there was one one enemy player invader just stood right there waiting for me which I thought was really creepy and it was that thing where it's kind of like it waits for you to be like a certain place and it just jumps out and attacks you which I thought was creepy scary and I was like out of my depth I was like no 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 I'm not gonna survive this I ended up actually like beating it with like a barely like sliver of health left don't actually have the recording of it but it was really really cool and it, you do actually have those constant epic moments and again Again, even though the kind of like levels or like the sections of the Tower of Barbs for the moment from what I've seen from like say maybe about five hours of gameplay from going back and forth and building up my characters because this is something that I've actually been doing a lot of is that I've not actually been kind of going up the Tower of Barbs is that I've actually been kind of like staying in say like the first about seven floors and building up my characters because remember that when you're actually away from your home base other players can actually invade your hub and steal your money can actually steal your upgradable souls and stuff because there is that thing where you use souls to kind of like level up your base and kind of like give you more capacity when it comes to your bank, when it comes to your soul bank, when it comes to you having more characters in your freezer and stuff. And so there is that kind of thing where you're constantly having to kind of like look after your home as well. And so you kind of have to kind of like level up all of your characters over and over again, take them into those different areas and kind of like build them up as a party and have, make sure they have really good loot to defend your home and stuff as well, which I will cover in the future too. Now you may have noticed here that I found an open area. Obviously there's going to be a 
boss in here, and it's actually a sub boss. The second sub boss, as I mentioned, really weird woman has, seems to just only have like a top half, and she has this weird slug thing and a cannon in her stomach, which is cool. And then all these surveillance cameras on her shoulders, which I, I don't know, is a really unique kind of character. And basically, the kind of like tactics of this enemy is that if the cameras spot you, or they always do spot you, then she'll fire like rapid fire slug balls at you, and she also has the cannon, which will do like some kind of weird like fire hydrant kind of shot. It's really weird. You only see it get happen or used by this enemy once and then as well it has like a, a more tower ability and then there's like a weird phase basically i think it has kind of like three phases and the first phase is kind of like casually trying to fight you it teleports around the place and tries to like get behind you while you're behind these pillars as well and then later on it'll actually like go on like an all out offensive and then it'll actually use higher up platforms kind of like teleport and like stay out of reach and you actually have to go for it i think it should go after it which is kind of like weird and nerve-wracking because generally in this game you kind of wait for enemies to come to you and then you counter or you kind of like try and figure out a way around them but with this boss fight when it actually gets to a certain amount of health it actually ends up having to kind of like you know force you on the offensive which I found was kind of weird you may notice I'm actually using all my gadgets to my advantage in a sense I actually think I feel a little bit like I went a bit slow with this fight like I ended up realizing after using all of my mushrooms and stuff I'm using my boom shrooms I'm using poison shrooms you know I'm, I actually try and use an REM shroom as well which is basically where you can put enemies to sleep it seems that some bosses cannot be affected by REM mushrooms, so don't waste those on those enemies. But poison mushrooms seem to work really, really well. Even if it is only just doing chip damage, like, I seem to find that the, the poison mushrooms are really good against enemy kind of invader AI, which is kind of awesome. Because one thing that it'll actually do is, with the poison ability or from that mushroom, is that it does poison enemies over time, as you can see it's doing chip damage. But when it comes to a standard enemy AI, they actually have to go into a bit of a stun mode where they have to regurgitate the poison to stop it coming out. And it actually puts them in a little bit of like a stun phase where they can't do any attacks, when they can't kind of evade and stuff. So you can actually punish enemies when using that, but it doesn't work on the sub bosses. It seems, it seems to just only do a little bit of damage over time, but still, you know, I'm chipping away at it. I'm trying my best to try and kick its butt. But again, it's this thing where with the sub bosses, you really want to go out on that offensive. It's something that I've learned now from the first sub boss, which you saw me fight in the last video, and also with this boss as well. I actually end up realizing I have to melee this thing. I can't keep hiding behind pillars. It's not as deadly as you might think. It can obviously kill you. I mean, that's kind of the point of these sub bosses that they actually have a bit of a challenge to them, and they will pwn you if you let them. But they all have a process, they all have a tactic, a way to actually work around them and beat them. So this is actually where I go in for the kill look, and I realize my hammers can actually do a lot of damage but you do actually have to kind of like use that maneuverability of a character and roll around and stuff and make sure that you can actually kind of like look after yourself while damaging the enemy sub boss now when it comes to that you may notice that I'm actually doing quite a lot of damage to it with my weapons now the reason for that is that you may notice two little stickers in the middle of the screen right at the bottom these are actually called decals and this is something that I will actually show you in a future video as well where basically you meet this character called the Mushroom Lady. It was actually a character that I showed you in the last video, which you say you throw a mushroom at her and it kind of like heals and then she kind of like opens a gateway and stuff like that. You basically have to like go to her and you can actually give your character special abilities. And these are really cool because basically what I've ended up doing is I've ended up getting this brand new character which has a better stat boost than just the standard all arounders. Once you go up to a certain like part of the Tower of Barbs, you end up unlocking different character templates. Some really good at defense, some will have like a bigger kind of like item kind of like bag so they can actually carry more stuff. Some will be able to do more critical damage, some will actually have better stamina and health, you know, so it has like kind of thing where they all have different like attributes, weaknesses, strengths and stuff which will kind of like depend on how you want to use them and how you want to put them on defense and stuff like that. This is actually its ultimate ability where it does this weird crazy kind of vomit fire hydrant thing but you only ever see it once that actually kind of continues to be like beat it up now. But the reason why I'm able to do so much damage to it is because of these decal stickers. So what I've ended up being able to unlock is the first one is actually a standard decal which you can actually buy for I think it's around about 7,000 kill coins which isn't too bad. That's kind of like free runs for say maybe going up to the fifth floor and coming all the way back down again is the ability to actually have 7% more attack damage which is obviously really really awesome and then the second one which is kind of like a four leaf clover is actually one that I gained by spending 50,000 credits and this is actually by eating something called a mushroom stew so by actually going to this mushroom lady you can actually spend 50,000 kill coins and this will actually allow you to have a mushroom stew which will give you a randomly kind of like created decal sticker which is kind of cool so it's one that you can't actually buy it's one that actually has to be 
purchase through the mushroom stew. And the one that I got was this four leaf clove, which allows me to have, I think it's around about a 12 to 15% more critical like damage output which is kind of cool so i'm able to do some serious damage to my enemies especially when it comes to say doing grotesque kills when it actually comes to doing like back attacks so one of the really awesome things now is i actually have this character who has the damage buff but with that critical like attack buff as well it means that when i do stealth kills i've got kind of pretty much like an assassin character now and now when i do kind of like damage to an enemy like as you can see by my health i have around about just over 200 health but my critical damage now is over 200 as well so if i'm going against say like enemy invaders and i'm actually able to get like a silent takedown on them i can generally most of the time kill them in one takedown from behind which is really badass so it's that thing where decals are really important when it comes to your characters especially when it comes to just like standard melee attacks because remember that critical damage will obviously kind of go into my standard attacks as well and actually give me a damage both like on top of the standard damage buff that I already have from the first decal. So there are so many things that factor into it and so many things that you have to think about when it comes to actually fighting these bosses, when it comes to fighting enemies and actually like making a character that kind of like benefits you. Like I like to actually fight the enemies. I actually kind of like to like dodge and actually have like a really good damage output, try and be a tank in a sense. As you see here, just defeated that second sub boss and we actually get a little bit of loot and stuff, which is kind of awesome as well. Get a bit of a level up and you know, it was nice, fun and awesome. And now that boss will actually show up like later on in the game, it'll actually be multiple of them supposedly have been warned by the Grim Reaper and along with that I've ended up upgrading into a brand new Freezer character too, so I actually have a different template, so by defeating these sub-bosses you actually get different unlocks as well, which is kind of cool, so again, kind of this like intentional kind of like progressions actually go forwards and play the game even more and actually get even more benefits in the future, especially since there's actually the quest thing in this game as well, and this kind of again goes with that kind of freemium thing which it combats, where basically the whole point of the game again is that if you like kind of like lose your character, you can spend death metal coins to bring your character back to life and you don't lose them ever again and stuff because again it, this game has got a little bit of like a roguelike feature to it and stuff which is kind of cool but by using death metal you can actually bring your characters back to life and you won't lose them but you actually gain death metal by doing quests and that's just by kind of like killing say like 20 to 50 enemies and you'll gain maybe about four death metal one death metal brings a character back to life and so the game is really really charitable when it comes to awarding you with death metal when it comes to actually giving you those kind of premium currencies and things like that especially Especially since I'm able to use something called an elevator, it's called a, d what's it called, it's called like a DHL, like, I think it's called like the demon, the demon premium elevator or something like that, and basically allows me to go to kind of like any floor I want for free without having to spend any kind of like entry fee currency, and that's kind of cool, and it's that thing where you can actually use death metal to pay for that, but you actually gain death metal by just playing the game like casually, by doing quests, by completing those kind of things, and you can actually play those quests over and over again and actually regain that death metal as much as you want, so again, there's no kind of like like forceful kind of like baiting to actually spend premium currency which i think is kind of awesome now these are actually the jackals these are actually one of the main kind of antagonists in the game which is kind of cool so there are three different types you have this guy here with the gun you have one with this really weird kind of like bunsen burner yo-yo and the other guy has a sword which is obviously really really badass and these are so pseudo 51 you know they have that real kind of like grasshopper manufacture kind of like art style to them they i don't know they just look really badass and i really can't wait to fight them and it's that thing look where they kind of like acknowledge the 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 world these other survivors that are in there in these the Tower of Barbs with you, and I don't know, I just think it's really nice, really, really cool. Obviously, I don't fight them, I was like, screw this, I'm going back to home base now. I had all this loot, did not want to lose it all, and so I head back now. But I hope you enjoyed this video and not me talking about the game. Remember to comment section below and let me know what you think to Let It Die on the PlayStation 4 Pro, which I'm actually playing today. It's obviously as well on the standard PlayStation 4 as well. But we'd love to know what you think to what you're going to play. Are you excited to play? Have you been playing it? Do you think it sucks? We'd love to know all of your opinions, but it has been me, Josh, aka Noir Proxy, bringing you some Let It Die. And I'll see you all next time. Ciao for now.